Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is time for another video in my crafty must-have series. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite stamping goodies. I hope you'll stick around and see what I can't stamp without. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In my last couple videos, I have shared with you both my favorite cutting tools and my favorite adhesives. If you missed those videos or want to watch them again, I will have my crafty must-haves playlist linked in the description box below. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the stamping tools, inks, sets that I don't think I could get crafty without. Most of these are just basics that I think maybe every stamper or card maker needs, but I will have a couple splurges in there too at the end. If you're interested in finding out any more about the products or tools that I share today, I do have some links in the description box. Now, a lot of these links will be affiliate links, which means I get a small portion of the sale if you use those links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. I also understand shopping local and finding the best deal that you can. So even if you don't make any purchases from my video today using those links, I would appreciate in the future if you're ever going to do a little crafty online shopping that you might consider using my links. I always have those in the description box of my video. Let's see what got the stamp of approval. The first stamping must-haves that I'm going to share with you are the inks that I buy over and over again or have refills for. These are really just staples for different ways and mediums that you want to stamp on. Up on the left is VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I use this for stamps that have fine details. That I also want in black. Most of the time I use this for sentiments. Over on the right is Black Stays On ink. You know that I love to make clear cards, but you really just can't use any old ink on that plastic. So this is going to allow you to stamp and for it to stick to that clear plastic. Now Stays On does make other colors, but I find I just use this the most often when I need to stamp on slick surfaces. Here in the bottom left, love, love, love Versamark. This would be the ink pad out of all of these that I would have to rush out the same day if I lost this. I do actually have a reinker for this though, so that's always handy. This is what I use to do all of my embossing with, and it is also a watermark ink pad. So if you have maybe a pretty floral stamp that you want to stamp on a colored piece of cardstock but have it just turn out slightly darker than the cardstock, this is what you're going to use. Over on the bottom right is my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I use this when I color with alcohol markers or do like colored pencils with Gamsol. I just find for me that this doesn't run. And then finally in the center for must-haves is my Ranger Sepia ink. Now this is not something that every card maker would have to have. It's just like I really love this and use it all the time. Again, this is one I have a reinker for. It's just a nice brown, kind of like a craft color when you use it. And I like this to ink up edges or kind of distress items. Now for my ink splurge. This in front of me is an entire set of Gina K Designs ink cubes. I have accumulated these over the past year. I bought them in sets of eight. And until recently, I kept each set in its own little four by six holder. But just last weekend, since I had gotten them all, I took one of the plastic boxes from a Gina K Designs card kit, and I made that into my new holder so they're all in one place. I designed a sheet that had the ink names, and then my daughter helped me stamp out each of those swatches. 
I have found that if I need a colored ink to match a pattern paper or a cardstock, that I usually have something in this set that will work. I just hold up the pattern paper or whatever it is to my ink swatch guide, and then I come and grab the ink that goes with it. Now I did find at first I didn't have dividers between each of the rows and they were just like moving all over place, but I did make my own dividers. I'll see if you can see it here. By just scoring and folding a piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper that I was never gonna use for anything. So this just sits at the bottom and then it keeps stuff from moving back and forth if I have an empty opening. Again, this is definitely a splurge, but something that I go back to time and time again. My next stamping must have our embossing powders. Now I did just mention earlier that I use my Versamark for my embossing ink. And I have a few powders that I love to use. Now I definitely have a lot more colors in my stash just because at one point I thought I needed every color, but the ones I use the most are clear, gold, black, silver, and white. For myself, I usually buy the detail powders, so if I'm trying to emboss a sentiment, that it won't be too chunky and you'll still be able to read that sentiment after. As for the brands, I would say stick with one you like if you already do have one. I have a combination of Recollections and Ranger embossing powders that I use the most. I just like the little bit of extra texture embossing gives it, and especially when you do the gold and silver on a sentiment. In front of me now is the Misty. It was originally a stamping splurge for me, but it has quickly became a must-have. The cost of it is what kept it from being a must-have for me for a long time. This was something that I saved up for, and I actually bought it after I got to use it in a stamping class. You know that I love to mass produce cards and make sheet loads of them, so being able to set up a sentiment one time on a card and then creating it in the same exact spot multiple times is such a lifesaver when I am doing that. Another great advantage is if you need exact placement of a stamp on something and you don't want to take a chance, you know, with your clear block, this is a great way to set it up, see what it looks like before you actually stamp it. Next up on my stamping must-haves are sentiment stamps. This really makes up the majority of my stamp collection. I find myself um, going toward things that I can reuse over and over again versus where I find a lot of the image sets that I love and I do love cute image sets but most of them are pretty specific to one occasion or one type of card and I like stuff that can be used for many different types of cards. In front of me here are some of my favorite companies and stamp sets, but there are so many awesome ones out there. You know, look around locally in your town, look at your favorite stamp companies or other creators that you like to see stamp, and check out and see what they use. Over on the left, I always reach for my Pretty Pink Posh sentiment stamps. What really drew me to these is the cursive kind of writing with then the printed more computer looking text. I absolutely love these and I have quite a few sets in my collection that do have that kind of cursive handwriting with the printed, but many of those you can't find anymore. In the middle is this Kelly Create set. I love the scripty kind of calligraphy font on this and these are really affordable. Like I have found some for just a few dollars um, both local, in stores, and online. Over on the right, this reverse confetti stamp set, you can't even read it anymore because it's so loved. I love the sentiments in this. They are so great to use for cards, for friends, or family. And the set is called The Most Beauty. I'll pop an image up here on screen so you can actually see what those sentiments say. And then finally on the right is another stamp company I love to buy their sentiments from. 
Sweet and Sassy Stamps does a lot of faith-based images and sentiments. And while I wouldn't consider myself really religious, I do have many friends and family members who are. And there is something about um, a quote from scripture or a faith-based sentiment that gets me every time. And I have more of these stamp sets than I probably need, but I just love the sayings on them and how, again, they can be used for more than one occasion. To go along with those other sentiment stamp sets, these Hero Arts stamp and cut sets are one of my other favorites. I'm not usually very big on buying stamps with the coordinating dies, but this is definitely one exception. Each of these you can stamp or die cut the word, and then it has little sentiments to go with it that you can stamp. I just like the variety that you'll get here and the price. I know I did just mention that I usually don't buy coordinating stamps and die sets, but there are some exceptions. First of all, I love many of the doodle bug, doodle stamps, and doodle cuts. I tend to lean toward educational ones. I have a lot of friends and family members in the educational field, and I love how adorable the images are, and they're kind of hard to cut out some of them. But my favorite thing is these are super easy to color. They're not really detailed and I can usually find these on a good sale at either like scrapbook.com or sometimes on Amazon. Another exception I make again is for price. This set in front of me here, I found it Tuesday morning for $3.99. And you know that I love like state die cuts, United States die cuts. So this one was right up my alley and I decided to get it. Over on the right, again, it usually when I buy stamps with coordinating dies, it has to do with how cute and how easy they are to color. And this CC Designs stamp set and coordinating dies are no exception. And again, it's kind of in that kid educational field that I have a lot of people I could make cards for using this. I used to purchase a lot more things just because they were cute. You know, I love lots of stamps out there, lots of die cuts and I could probably spend thousands a month on everything that I like. But I have to look at a set and really think, how many ways could I really use that and would I do it? And that kind of helps me judge anymore about what I do buy. So that's something you can keep in mind for yourself is you don't have to have the latest and greatest, the newest. You know what, some of my favorite stamps are a decade old and I still get those out and use them because hey, they still work and they're still adorable. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my stamping must-haves. Let me know in the comment section below what stamp set or stamp accessory you couldn't craft without. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.